Glenn Campbell, The Sad Ending to the Rhinestone Cowboy, a Spotlight TV production. Glenn Travis Campbell was born on April 22, 1936, in Billstown, a tiny community near Delight in Pike County, Arkansas, to John Wesley, a sharecropper, and Carrie Dell Stone Campbell. Campbell was of Scottish descent and was the seventh son of twelve children. As a child, he almost died from drowning. His family went to Church of Christ, and Campbell's brother Lindell became a Church of Christ minister. The family lived on a farm where they barely managed by growing cotton, corn, watermelons, and potatoes. We had no electricity, he said, and money was scarce. A dollar in those days looked as big as a saddle blanket. To supplement income, the family picked cotton from other farmers. Campbell said, I picked cotton for a dollar and a quarter, a hundred pounds. If you worked your tail off, you could pick 80 or 90 pounds a day. Campbell started playing guitar at age four after his father gave him a Sears bought $5 guitar as a gift with his Uncle Boo teaching him the basics of how to play. Most of his family was musical. Back home, everybody plays and sings, he said. By the time he was six, he was performing on local radio stations. Campbell continued playing guitar in his youth with no formal training and practiced when he was not working in the cotton fields. He developed his talent by listening to radio and records, and considered Django Reinhardt among his most admired guitarist, later calling him the most awesome player I ever heard. Campbell dropped out of school at 14 to work in Houston alongside his brothers, installing insulation and later working at a gas station. Not satisfied with that kind of unskilled work, Campbell started playing music at fairs and church picnics and singing gospel hymns in the church choir. He was able to find spots performing on local radio stations, and after his parents moved to Houston, he made some appearances at local nightclubs. In 1954, at age 17, Campbell moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico, to join his uncle's band known as Dick Bills and the Sandia Mountain Boys. He quit high school in 10th grade. He also appeared there on his uncle's radio show and on K-Circle B Time, the local children's program on KOB television. It was there that he met his first wife, whom he married when he was 17 and she was 60. In 1958, Campbell formed his own band the Western Wranglers. We worked hard, he said, six, sometimes seven nights a week. I didn't have my eyes set on any specific goal or big dreams. In 1960, Campbell moved to Los Angeles to become a session musician. That October, he joined the Champs. By January 1961, Campbell had found a daytime job at publishing company American Music, writing songs and recording demos. Because of these demos, Campbell was soon in demand as a session musician and became part of a group of studio musicians later known as the Wrecking Crew. Campbell played on recordings by the Beach Boys, Bobby Darin, Frank Sinatra, Ricky Nelson, Dean Martin, Nat King Cole, The Monkees, Nancy Sinatra, Merle Haggard, Jan and Dean, and Elvis Presley, and a slew of others. He befriended Presley when he helped record the soundtrack for Viva Las Vegas in 1964. He later said, Elvis and I were brought up the same humble way, picking cotton and looking at the south end of a northbound mule. In May of 1961, he left the champ and was subsequently signed by Crest Records. 
a subsidiary of American Music. His first solo release, Turn Around, Look at Me, had a moderate success. It peaked at number 62 on the Hot 100s in 1961, but reached number 7 on the Hot 100 in 1968 when the Vogues covered it. Campbell also formed GCs with former band members from the Champs, performing at the Crossbow Inn in Van Nuys. The GCs, too, released a single on Crest, the instrumental buzz song, which did not chart. In 1962, Campbell signed with Capitol Records. After minor initial success with Too Late to Worry, Too Blue to Cry, his first single for the label, and Kentucky Means Paradise, released by the Green River Boys featuring Glenn Campbell. A string of unsuccessful singles and albums followed. By 1963, his playing and singing were heard on 586 recorded songs. He never learned to read music, but besides guitar, he could play the banjo, mandolin, and bass. From 1964 on, Campbell began to appear on television as a regular on Star Root, a syndicated series hosted by Rod Cameron, ABC's Shindig, and Hollywood Jamboree. From December 1964 to early March 1965, Campbell was a touring member of the Beach Boys, filling in for Brian Wilson, playing bass guitar and singing falsetto harmonies. He was then replaced on the Beach Boys tours by new member Bruce Johnston. In 1965, he had his biggest solo hit yet, reaching number 45 on the Hot 100 with a version of Buffy St. Marie's Universal Soldier. Asked about the pacifist message of the song, he said that people who are advocating burning draft cards should be hung. Campbell continued as a session musician playing guitar on the Beach Boys' 1966 album, Pet Sounds, among other recordings. In April of that year, he joined Rick Nelson on tour through the Far East, again playing bass. When follow-up singles didn't do well, and Capitol was considering dropping Campbell from the label in 1966, he was teamed up with producer Al DeLore. Together, they first collaborated on Burning Bridges, which became a top 20 country hit in early 1967, and the album of the same name. Campbell and DeLore collaborated again in 1967's Gentle on My Mind, written by John Hartford, which was an overnight success. The song was followed by the bigger hit by the time I get to Phoenix, later in 1967, and I Want to Live in Wichita Lineman in 1968, remaining on Billboard's Top 100 chart for 15 weeks. He won four Grammy Awards for Gentle on My Mind and By the Time I Get to Phoenix. In 1967, Campbell was also the uncredited lead vocalist on My World Fell Down by Sagittarius, a studio group. The song reached number 70 on the Billboard Hot 100. In 1968, Campbell released Wichita Lineman, a song written by Jimmy Webb. It was recorded with backing from members of The Wrecking Crew and appeared on his 1968 album of the same name. It reached number three on the U.S. pop charts remaining in the top 100 for 15 weeks. In addition, the song also topped the American Country Music Chart for two weeks and the Adult Contemporary Chart for six weeks. After he hosted a 1968 summer replacement for television's The Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour variety show, Campbell was given his own weekly variety show, The Glenn Campbell Good Time Hour which ran from January 1969 through June 1972. The show's comedy writers included Steve Martin and Rob Reiner. With Campbell's session work connections, 
He hosted major names in music on his show, including The Beatles on film, David Gates, Bread, The Monkees, Neil Diamond, Linda Rodstad, Johnny Cash, Merle Haggard, Willie Nelson, Waylon Jennings, Roger Miller, and Mel Tellis. Campbell helped launch the careers of Ann Murray and Jerry Reed, who were regulars on the Good Time Hour program. During the late 1960s and early 1970s, Campbell released a long series of singles and appeared in the movie True Grit in 1969 with John Wayne and Kim Darby. And in 1970, he starred again with Kim Darby and Joe Namath in the movie Norwood. In the mid-1970s, he had more hits with Rhinestone Cowboy and Southern Nights, both U.S. number one hits. Sunflower, U.S. number 39, written by Neil Diamond, and Country Boy, You Got Your Feet in L.A., U.S. number 11. Rhinestone Cowboy was Campbell's largest selling single and one of his best known recordings initially with over two million copies sold. Both songs were in October 4, 1975's Hot 100 Top 10, Southern Nights by Alan Toussaint. His other number one pop rock country crossover hit was generated with the help of Jimmy Webb and Jerry Reed, who inspired the famous guitar lick introduction to the song which was the most played jukebox number of 1977. From 1971 to 1983, Campbell was the celebrity host of the Los Angeles Open, an annual professional golf tournament on the PGA Tour. In 2005, Campbell was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame. Following his late 2010 Alzheimer's diagnosis, Campbell embarked on a final goodbye tour, with three of his children joining him in his backup band. He was too ill to travel to Australia and New Zealand in the summer of 2012. His final show was on November 30, 2012, in Napa, California. In March 2016, it was confirmed that Campbell was in the final stages of Alzheimer's disease. Campbell died in Nashville, Tennessee on August 8, 2017 at the age of 81. He was buried in the Campbell Family Cemetery in Billstown, Arkansas.